Lights, camera, diversity. This year, the Tribeca Film Festival will be kicking off its 18-year anniversary at the Apollo Theater. But with a lineup of 103 feature films from across the globe, the celebration is about more than just storytelling. It's also about inclusion. With over 40% of feature films directed by women, 29% people of color, and 13% people who identify as LGBT, this just might be the festival's most inclusive year yet. Here with a preview of this year's events is Lauren Hammonds, the senior programmer at the Tribeca Film Festival. Lauren, it's nice to have you here with us. Thank you for having me, Jack. I want to get into some of the specifics, but first I want to talk about the selection process. I looked at some numbers and I thought, oh my, this is really daunting. How, how many, give me an estimate of how many submissions <laughs> do you have for this? Sure. Uh, between our feature films and short films, we had over 9,000 submissions this year. It grows every year. So, of course, we have a dedicated team of screeners and programmers looking at these films and giving them all uh, a fair shot for inclusion at the festival. So how do you make this selection? Do you start off with certain categories and a rough number for each, or, or do you just, each year, it depends upon the quality of the films? Well, generally, in terms of the feature film program, we like to keep it around 100, which is right. relatively small for a festival of our size. Uh, we do have separations in within the program, like our U.S. narrative competition and our international narrative competition, et cetera. So, you know, we're we're... Really just looking, though, for a well-rounded group of films that really appeal to the New York community and the international community. I mentioned the, the inclusion numbers at the top. And I guess my question is, oftentimes people say, is this a chicken or an egg situation? Are you, are you getting more in terms of those inclusion numbers because you're looking for more? Or do you get more because more people are coming to you or some combination of all those things? I mean, I think it is a combination. We are definitely looking uh, to, to widen the, the breadth of filmmakers and creators that we have at the festival. Uh, the way that we look at it is, you know, if you are able to diver diversify the voices that are telling the stories, then you get a much richer experience for the audience. So we're definitely out there looking and we're, we're, we want to reflect the city that we are in. And in order to do that, we really do have to look at inclusion. I, I suspect some people would say, well, how would I notice a difference of different voices? People, uh, stories being told by people of color, by, by women, by people who are identifying themselves, as I mentioned, LBGTQ. What's the answer to that? How does that enhance storytelling? Well, you know, I don't think that there's an easy answer to that. I think that, you know, it's really about an individual. So an individual filmmaker or creator that is uh, coming from a, a certain perspective, uh, you do feel that within the storytelling. But I don't think that there's anything that you can put into a box that says this is a film by a person of color or this is a film by a person who identifies as LGBTQIA. I think more, you know, when you see all of these films across the board from every different type of creator, that's where the, the richness and the enrichment of the entire program comes in. What do you think it is about about the Tribeca Festival, that it's allowed it to grow so quickly. It's in competition with festivals that have been around for decades. Why has this become so popular so quickly? Well, you know, I think it all goes back to the origin of the festival. So uh, the festival was started 18 years ago by our founders, Robert De Niro and Jane Rosenthal, as a direct response to 9-11. And their idea was to create something that could really revitalize the community at that time. And get people uh, excited to be in New York and start to love each other again and get rid of the fear. And the best way to do that is through art. So I think that's something that is still in our DNA and it has continued. And our festival has grown and evolved to become something more than just a film festival. We are more of a storytelling festival. So we have all of these different platforms like television, immersive, new online work. Uh, we have a great series of talks, storytellers and director series, along with the feature films. Let's talk about some of these things that are coming sure. up this year because they're, 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 it's such a marvelous lineup. Uh, Oftentimes you have films that are highly anticipated, people know about, and other times there are films that nobody knows about, but they walk away knowing about it. Yes. Let's, give me an illustration, one or two of the really highly anticipated films that are going to show up. Sure. Um, so, of course, we are 
starting our opening night with the Apollo, which we're so excited yeah, about. Yeah, I, I want to ask you about that, too. Why, why at the Apollo? Why? Well, so again, back to the origin of, of our festival, we're all about bringing arts to the community and continuing to have that relationship. And that's exactly what the institution of the Apollo has been about for 85 years. So the film, which is directed by Roger Ross Williams, Academy Award winner, right. of course, um, you know, that film tells about uh, the, the impact that the Apollo has had in not just this city, but in the entire world. So we're striving for something similar, so we really, really wanted to do that. And of course, we're better to show that film than at the iconic the Apollo. Apollo Theater. So exactly. we're excited to be uptown. That's a great year. kickoff. Yes, for absolutely. Uh, one or two other films that are, that are fairly anticipated. Again, we're super excited about our closing night film, which is Danny Boyle's Yesterday. Uh, this is a film that has an amazing premise. It's basically about a, a struggling singer-songwriter who gets in an accident during a worldwide blackout. And when he uh, comes to, he realizes that he's the only person on Earth who knows that the Beatles ever existed. It's, so what do you do with that? I saw knowledge? a trailer for it recently. Uh, it's, and I thought, my wife and I watched it and said, that sounds fascinating. Yeah, it's such a brilliant premise, but it's just a. And by the way, he's with, so good playing he's, the Beatles. He's this amazing. Um, Hanish Patel, Hanish Patel, who uh, is this is his feature film debut, is and he really? carries this film. It's just really, really heartwarming. Yeah. It's romantic. Yeah. It's really funny. Makes it's, you smile. It's great. Makes yeah. you smile. Some of the other things you're doing. You talk about conversations, and one of them you mentioned Robert De Niro. Yes. Um, and th you've got a really fascinating conversation scheduled with him for this. Tell me about that. Yes. So, of course, we have Robert De Niro in conversation with Martin Scorsese. Wow. Uh, they have obviously had such an amazing partnership over the, the decades. And so they're talking to each other about their relationship, the work that they've done together, and the work that they've done individually. And I think this is the first time that they've had this opportunity to sit down in front of an audience and have this conversation. So, of course, I'm anticipating that. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a fan. I'll be able to sit in and listen in on, on all of that. Yeah. yeah. Give me, you got about a minute or so left. Give me a, a, a kind of a list of some of the other things that people should look forward to. Sure. So one that's very fun and very New York. We have a film that's uh, part of our ESPN Sports Film Festival. Yeah. It's called The Good, The Bad, and The Hungry. Uh, and it's about the Nathan's hot dog eating, eating contest. Uh, so <laughs> and that. also about competitive eating. It is really, really something that I think audiences will love. It's, um, I know that people get, they, they might shy, shy away from watching someone eating 50. But it's kind of like to watch a train wreck. You say, oh, that's awful. What, what time to, is it on? Yeah, Can I watch that? Exactly. Right. But when you see how they've been training and you see the real competitive spirit that comes into this, it's, it's really fascinating. Um, and then, of course, we, we love to, to think of ourselves as a discovery film festival as well. So we have wonderful films in our U.S. narrative uh, competition. Uh, we have some great spotlight films. Um, yeah, we have, we have so, so many. I mean, over 100, but just over 100. Anybody who's never been there before, get it on your schedule. Please. There's all Come. sorts of things that you can go and participate yes, in. Yes. And it's worth the visit. Lauren, thanks so much for spending some time with us. Good luck uh, with it this year. We'll look forward to talking with you next year and thanks see how you get over that bar that you've established. All right. Thank you so much. You'll be welcome. All right. Have a good one.